well, it's too much snow and ice for me to do any gold mining. You know? I mean, I got icicles hanging off the roof. So what are we going to do today? Well, I'll tell you. Years ago, back in 2000, we made this, uh, actually in 1999, we made a trip to a LDMA claim over on the Yuba River back when they had it before they lost it. My buddy Tom and I, we were starting our two weeks vacation. So we went down there and got all of our gear down the river. And old Tom, he was all excited, just loving life. He uh, went ahead and but he walked back up a different trail than the one we, that we'd made and the other people had made when we went down there. He ended up stepping on this rock and uh, his foot just went like this. And uh, he broke his ankle just after we got everything down to the river. So, you know, I got him and carried him back up. And we ended up getting him into the doctor. And that was our vacation for 99. And, uh, pretty wild, you know, I mean, pretty serious stuff. He ended up getting pins put in his ankle and stuff, and of course I got all the all the flack for being, you know, the guy who just wanted to take Tom out in the woods and get rid of him. <laughs> and the funniest thing was, I, uh, he's in there laying in the doctor's office, our vacation is ruined, it's, I mean, it's the first day of our vacation. And so he's got all the x-rays, they show his leg all broken everywhere, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to get you. So I took my hand, and I gave him a stored hand in the side, just real quick, right in the rib, just like, son of a bitch, you know? And he, he's, you know, he, he moves a little bit, and I didn't hit him that hard, not enough to make him move, but, you know, he was flinched, and, oh, and then he moved his leg on accident. Ah! He and Tom are best friends, so we can do that kind of stuff to each other. So anyway... We went back down there the next year, again, and actually wrote this story up, and I sent it in to the uh, GPAA magazine, but it never got published, so that's kind of, do it on our webpage, the 49 Act page, years ago, I never really actually wrote it up and put that whole story on there, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in pictures today. Then I'm going to go through the pictures and tell you, so it's going to be another pictorial. Oh. Um, yeah, it's a pretty nice day out here. The sun's shining. I got fresh water. Even though it's frozen, it's still fresh water. And uh, I already plowed. I don't know how many degrees it is out here, but the doors are frozen shut on the cars. Again, I have to wait a little bit before I can pry them open. I don't like prying them open. I would rather, uh, nothing like having icicles in the morning. I'd rather wait a couple hours until they thaw out enough to where they'll open on their own. So, because I got no reason to go anywhere. So, yeah, 1999, we kind of had a bad trip. Here it is, 2012. I'm telling a story from 2000, so it's been 12 years. These pictures are pretty old. I didn't use a camera back then. I used to write articles. I wrote an article for the ICMJ back in those days somewhere around 2004 probably, and you know, a couple articles here and there, and a lot of articles. I used to write articles all the time for the 49 Mike webpage. And uh, then I got this camera and stopped, and so all the pictures, I still have them, so let's go. Yeah, this is the same put-in point that we had in 99. We had all of our gear down here that year, all the way to the bottom, and Tom was just walking back up the hill and, you know, just enjoying life. And, you know, it was the beginning of our vacation, the very first day, and next thing you know, snap. Oh, Reed, I just broke my leg. You know. <laughs> well, you know, that's how it goes back in those days. You don't always have a great trip. 
But you know what? He came back to the house. We spent the rest of our vacation basically in my house and had a good time that time. And uh, so here we are in 2000, back in the same place. We got all our gear in. There's a few of us down here tonight. This is a three-family camping trip. And uh, you can look all the way up river there and see the, the falls, which is where we wanted to go gold mining. We didn't want to be gold mining down here in the, uh, in the pool. Yeah, and maybe you're asking why. I mean, you can see all this bedrock exposed down here. There's some nice cracks and crevices. But this is an old LDMA claim. And, you know, I've been talking to the people that were coming down here all the time. And uh, they were saying that, you know, people were always hitting this pool and that they'd had an 8-inch dredge come up through here. And, uh, well, that's fine with me, you know. I want to get up there to those rapids where I knew the gold was going to be, where most people aren't going to go into because it was really hard. And so we went ahead and uh, packed all of our gear down here. And, you know, we have the, the same home-built dredge that you see in my other videos. This is way back in 2000, just to give you an idea how long we've had that dredge. Then it's a four, five, six combo, or up to an eight inch, because I got the eight inch submersible that mounts underneath it. So it's a really, really good dredge. And anyway, yeah, this is the beginning picture, and we'll move on from here. So here we are up at the falls, just showing you a shot of the falls before we get the dredge in. And you can see our tie rope there. We went, we went ahead and we ran a high line across the river because it was uh, too swift for us to use an anchor. And, you know, because you couldn't put the anchor out there and then get it back out. It was just, it was so swift that we couldn't even hold ourselves in the water with 100 pounds of weight on. It was just, just that radical right there. And, and at the bottom of the river, we were just getting swept back. But uh, we got up there as close as we could, you know, to the falls and tried it out. And it was just... Uh, we couldn't stay in place and everything was just moving on us so we went ahead and backed up just behind that rock and you know we're going to show you that picture next so this is one of my good old famous pictures I guess you could say and it kind of looks like I'm standing there in nothing and you can see Tom at the very head of the dredge and he's actually got a hold of the dredge too and what I've got going on is my my legs are being swept so hard that I got them pinned against rocks and we just got the dredge there for the picture to make it look like it, you know, it was nice and easy. But actually, just getting to that one spot in the beginning of the rapids right there was just extremely difficult. And just staying right there in that spot was almost next to impossible. But, you know, Pedro and Tom and I and Abraham, my son, we were all down there. And then we had our entire families down there, too. And uh, the girls were down there swimming and enjoying life. And, and then Tom and... Pedro and I were up here putting the dredge together, and Pedro was taking this picture. And uh, and he'd gone up there, and he went to, took the tie line across, and we got everything all straightened around. You can see the the tie line is now you know connected to the dredge. And uh, this was the beginning. We wanted to get as close to those falls as we could, so we could get the larger nuggets out of there. That's what we were looking for. I mean, this is the Yuba River, and it's known for nuggets, and that's what we we're there for. So we wanted to go into spots where, you know, most people wouldn't go. And this is exactly what we did. So we went ahead and we looked all around here. And uh, after we got the dredge set up, we had it set up for, to be a 6-inch. But we had everything for the 5-inch up in the car in case we needed to go deep. Because a 6-inch would only go probably 15 feet, where I could go 45 to 50 feet if we needed to with a 5-inch. Or even more if we converted it down to a 4. So here you can see we're just kind of looking around for the gold and stuff and getting it all set up and... We ended up going right behind that rock where I'm standing, and uh, we found some gold down there, but it really wasn't enough to bother with. Plus, it was so swift that even with 100 pounds of weight on, it wouldn't hold you to the bottom when we tried to even go up farther. You know, I think we tried up to 120 pounds of weight just to try and stay in the water. We kept getting swept out. So we did go up there behind that rock where Tom is, which is up there by the head. And uh, we did dredge up all around there, but it would have been pretty well swept, clean. And we went through it really, really fast. And we went into the cracks and stuff and got some gold out of there. But uh, anyway, yeah, we were pretty tired on that. We didn't quite find good enough gold to stay in that spot. And that's the idea. You go down there, you test it out. If there's no gold, you move to another spot. So this was pretty much the end of the first day. And we had to go back and get camp set up. And so we went back on down there with the families and 
started putting our tents up. You can see my tent in the background just behind me, and that's uh, little Katrina. I don't remember how old she was back then, but I mean, that was Pedro's daughter, Pedro and Renee's. And uh, then you could see Abraham just barely off there on the right getting his tent set up for the night. And, and him and Emma were staying there, and, you know, we were just having a good time. And uh, this was at Indian Valley Campground on the North Fork of the Yuba River. And it's a real nice campground. And there he is. He's got his tent all set up, and we're kicking back and pretty happy. And this is uh, pretty much the end of the first day. We had our two camping spots because there was three families. We took two camping spots. And then, of course, it was right on the river, and this was the view down river from right there at the uh, at the camp. And the camp was probably, oh, I don't know, maybe maybe two or three miles from where we were actually dredging. So here we were, day one, on our vacation, and there was uh, Katrina and Abe playing ball and just having fun. The kids all just all had a great time swimming and, you know, going dredging with us. They were using the, uh, the hookahs and going underwater and just having all kinds of fun. And this is the end of the first day right here, and this is just kind of sitting there. I think we're all getting in our tents and getting ready to hit the sack. So day two came around, and we didn't want to stay up there in those rapids anymore, so we pulled back behind this rock and started sitting up back here. And uh, we ended up getting some good gold back here because the rock was smack dab in the middle of the river. And that's actually not a boulder like we thought it was. It's part of the bedrock. So it worked out really well. We got all kinds of gold from right behind that piece, exposed bedrock right there. And here's another picture of us setting it up. You can see Abraham sitting on the bedrock rock up there. And then that's Pedro up there on top of the dredge. We were gassing it up and getting ready to go. And here we are. We're finally running. And I'm taking the pictures now. And you got Pedro sitting there floating in the water. And then Tom, he's getting ready to dive down. Yeah, it's kind of funny. He's getting ready to dive down, and uh, you can look at our dredge there. We had the twin 6.5s, and I don't remember if we had the Proline pumps or Keens on there then. I think we actually had the the Keens. This was the first year of the Keens that we had, and because uh, I think it was before they actually came out with a Proline HP 400s, and you can see we had the Keen box, and that was a 5-inch box that we converted to an over-under, then when they came out with a six inch header box for it uh, that year or the year before whatever it was we went in and put the six inch header on it so now we had a five inch header that converted to a four inch dredge with 50 feet of hose on it or now we had the six inch header with uh, i think we ended up with 18 feet of hose it was perfect for that and uh, of course back in those days we didn't have a gas compressor on there so we just had the the twin t80 air compressors you know one on both motors then we had, you know, reserve tanks and everything for everybody, and it was a real nice setup. And uh, you can see how it's running um, perfectly. This is our old home-built dredge back then when we only had four floats on the back, where today we have six because we've moved up a little bit more, and, you know, we still go to the same area. But, yeah, this was uh, the beginning of day one before we went underwater. And here's Tom and I. We're sitting down there at the bottom of the river. And you notice I don't have a full wetsuit on because I was too hot in my wetsuit. And we're moving rocks and moving boulders and just dredging all around and having a good old time. And just kind of splitting off. And I had, you know, that's one thing. You look at that rock I got my hand on. I had my hand on it to make sure that it didn't move. And so when it was ready to move, we could go ahead and pull it out of there. And here we are rolling it out of the way. We, we moved all kinds of boulders out of there that day. And, uh, you know, this is dredging. And I wish I had some actual footage underwater with my video camera here. But, well, we didn't have it back then. So we got these underwater pictures. And this is just taken with a uh, real cheap camera. One of those cameras from, uh, oh, you know, Payless or whatever. Just a little cheap disposable underwater camera and here's Pedro down there managing that six inch hose and you can look at that bedrock to the left of him and that's the actual rock that was the uh, the bedrock rock at the bottom of the river that we were cleaning out next to and we were trying to go up out in the rapid size so we'd get the nuggets out of there and we had Abraham down there too and in 2000 
you know, he's like nine years old, man. And so that was my kid back then, nine years old, underwater and dredging with us, running a six-inch hose like just the rest of us. He did real good. Another shot of Pedro working the hole. And we just kept working and working and working. And we got all kinds of nuggets out of the cracks in the bottom. We went ahead and once we hit bedrock, we found uh, the crack that uh, a crack ran right up along the edge of that bedrock chute. And it was just perfect for just getting the nuggets in. And they were just piled in there one after one. And so we actually had a whole vial of nuggets. And, you know, we had taken it and we put it up there where Tom and Abraham are. We had air hoses up there and stuff. And it was deep in a crack, this, this vial of nuggets, and somehow it got knocked out of there. So we actually lost a vial. And that's Pedro on the front, and of course Tom on the left, and Abraham in the back on the right. So we actually lost an ounce of nuggets. But, well, you know what? That's how it goes sometimes. It went back into the river, and we got plenty more gold. And that was just uh, the actual second day of dredging right there. But we were getting nuggets and pulling them out so much that we uh, just kind of lost track of what was going on. Next thing you know, some somewhere along the line, um, you know, we learned our lesson that day about having, you know, nuggets just sitting out on the rock, and we uh, definitely stored them better. And that's about the end of the first day. Well, I mean the second day. And Abraham, he was so tired that uh, he just fell asleep right in his chair right there in camp. And that's the thing about dredging, man. I mean... You know, you're down there all day in the water, underwater for eight or ten hours, moving rocks and, you know, moving big old boulders and winching stuff out of the way. It's a lot of work, man. You know, and here we are on, uh, was it day three, I guess? Another picture of Pedro standing up on the dredge. This is how we gas it up. You just climb up there and we'd gas it up. There's no sense in having a dredge that you can't stand on, so... That's what we were doing, and here we are again, and looks like, uh, I don't know if that's me or Pedro there, and somebody's underwater, you can see the people down there at the bottom of the river down there dredging, right there, right behind that piece of bedrock. And there's Tom down there, you can always tell Tom he likes that red hood. We actually had some uh, pictures of nuggets on the bottom too, but they didn't turn out, they ended up getting blackened out for some reason. Because it was kind of hard using the camera underwater, you know, with your mask on and stuff. You can't see nothing. And here's another picture of Tom. Just tossing cobbles. And then here's a picture of the float. You can barely see the tailings pile in the back. And then we had a huge, huge tailings pile. It's pretty hard to imagine because off that bedrock shelf, right behind it again, probably another 30 feet, there was another shelf that dropped down underwater another 20 feet, and we filled that entire shelf up and then uh, had this huge stack of cobbles. I mean, so that cobbles right there just went right off the edge and down. We filled it all the way up, and we actually had the cobbles coming back up on us. We moved that much material with the three of us in the week that we were there. And this is me down there doing some dredging and moving. You know, it's like that big old gold rock right there in the middle. We seem to get a lot of pictures of that rock. <laughs> it was pretty heavy. It was tough to move. And here's Abraham down at the bottom. We were just kind of sitting down there. We were taking our underwater shots for the day. And, you know, we're coming up towards the end of this. So we, uh, we took some underwater shots of each other. And obviously I wasn't a good cameraman because it was Pedro. And I was just a little bit too far away. I didn't realize I had to be just a little bit closer to get the perfect shot. But uh, yeah, that's him with that six inch nozzle, man. That dredge sure does work good, even still today. We use the same dredge today. The only difference is we have a different box on it. And we use the gas compressor. Yeah, another shot of Pedro, kind of far out, but you know what, it works. He's still there, you can still see it. And, and there's Tom. You know, we've got some good pictures of Tom underwater, too. Yeah, and you can check out the dredge if you want to learn how to build on your own. I've got my How to Build a Dredge video. It tells you how to build this exact dredge that we've been using for over 20 years now. And we always like taking the pictures with the regulators out of our mouth. You know, it just makes for a nice shot, and, uh, you know, it works out really good. 
Oh, Pedro, he took some good shots. I ended up being in the clearest water somehow, and I got a couple really nice shots. That's me there. And then uh, this is probably one of my best pictures I ever had taken underwater right here. You know, and it's pretty much a well-known shot. It's the shot that I use on the 49er Mike web page. And, you know, I've been using it for 20 years or something like that now. And so here we are. It's pretty much the end of our trip. We were uh, probably, this I don't know which night this was. We're sitting around a campfire. Man, we sure had some good food and some good eating. We actually had a bear come in there one night and, and try and get into our, uh, I think he actually got into one of the cool boxes, but we... Uh, you know, eliminated that problem and scared them off. Because, you know, me and Bear is kind of, we uh, we mix just fine. There's a picture of Connie on the left, and that's Carol on the right. And they were uh, pretty much headed up the kitchen with Renee. But I, Renee took a lot of the pictures, so she's not in any of the pictures, unfortunately. And then these are the two caretakers down there with uh, our take. He's actually got a, a vial of gold in his right hand. And uh, I don't remember the names. Then some of the nuggets here on the bottom are the ones we got out of there. The big nugget on the top right is a different nugget that I got in a couple of spots. I don't remember exactly where the gold all came from, but the vial came from here, and a lot of those nuggets came from here on this one trip. We had a good trip. We ended up with quite a bit of gold came out of there, and we were all really happy with what we ended up with. It was def definitely a good trip. And so this is it. You know, we packed up our stuff and brought everything back down and came on out and headed on home. And that was the end of our vacation, you know. And this was the year 2000. That was probably one of the best vacations we had because, I mean, as much as I loved this claim and wanted to go back, the LDMA ended up losing this claim oh, probably a year or two later. And we never had a chance to get back down to that claim. But uh, we got plenty of other places, as you can see in all of our videos. And all of our pictures and uh, yeah look at all that water coming off that dredge that was a nice box back in the day yeah Abraham's he set up there quite a bit and he was just uh, making sure it didn't get clogged up he was pretty much the uh, the dredge tender you know and he would help gas it up and everything you could walk up and down that dredge and and uh, man we really got the good gold that time you know well this is it for this video you guys have a good one